Hello, everyone. My name is Patroba Odera, and uh, I'm a lecturer in the Geomatics Division. I would like to welcome you to the, the presentation for today about uh, Geomatics. Thank you very much for uh, attending. And we would like to uh, introduce the uh, participants who are going to be uh, doing certain roles today. We have got uh, Dr. Mo Blessings Shoko who will be giving a presentation. And we have got uh, Mary uh, Hilton who is uh, uh, representing the administration. And we have got uh, Hayden who will be representing the uh, student uh, community from Geomatics. And at this point, uh, I would like to uh, make uh, an announcement that it is important that you post your questions in the Q&A section and we will be able to respond to them as soon as possible. At this juncture, I'd like to welcome Dr. Mo Blessings Shoko to give uh, a presentation about geomatics. Welcome, Doc. Thank you, Professor Odera. I'll share my screen quickly. I'd like to once again welcome you all and I'll give you a short presentation on what geomatics is all about. So by the end of this presentation, you should have a good, good, good uh, understanding of what the program is about and what we have on offer in the geomatics division. To start off, you've already met the program convener for geomatics, uh, Associate Professor Patroba Odera. What I'll talk you through is what geomatics is, our different geomatics programs, and what the experience of a geomatics student would, uh, would be at UCT. Maybe you'd like to know where exactly the geomatics department is situated. It's important to say at the start that we're part of a larger, uh, we are a division that is part of a larger department, the architecture planning and geomatics department. And we are situated on the fifth floor, Menzies building on Apple campus. I've got a little map at the bottom there. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a shot from Google Earth and we, that's where we are located. And the entire department, which is architecture, planning and geomatics, has facilities in both the Menzies building and across a bit in the St. Livers building. So students are patrons of both those areas and also of the broader UCT facilities. Right, maybe you've been asking, what is geomatics all about? We usually say that geomatics is an art, it is a science, it is a set of technologies for professionals who work within the built and the natural environment. And at UCT, we choose to define geomatics in terms of five M's and one A. What are the five M's? We tend to defi define it in terms of measurement, we define it in terms of modeling, we define it in terms of monitoring, we define it in terms of management, and we define it in terms of analysis. As I go further and show you the student experiences, these will speak to these different areas that we tend to focus on in our curriculum. Then our undergraduate programs, the one main uh, qualification that you, you will get at the end of your program is a Bachelor of Science in Geomatics, but there are different uh, specialization or different streams rather within the geomatics umbrella. There are two main streams. These are, you can choose to be either in the surveying stream or in the geoinformatics stream. Under the geoinformatics stream, you can see where my laser pointer is right now. We have the environmental geographical specialization or the computer science specialization. And it's important to, to mention that all these streams are exit points that give you an opportunity to register as a geom geomatics professional in a range of categories within the South African Geomatics Council. You may be asking, what are the entry requirements if I'm, I'm interested in this program? In the main, we consider the national, the South African National Senior Certificates, the subjects that we're looking for, it's mainly you must have English, you must have mathematics, you must have physical science, and we also look at the three next best subjects, excluding life orientation. We also consider international students. We have a lot of international students as well, and I've shown on the side that we consider A-level, A-level, a broad, I'd say a broad uh, number of international students, but our main emphasis still remains on English, mathematics, and physics. Then why would you want to study at geomatics? Why would you want to st study ge ge uh, geomatics at UCT? Firstly, you'd enjoy uh, a learning environment with experienced staff. 
Our staff uh, are experienced and we offer world class facilities. Our programs are accredited by the South African Geomatics Council. Both our students and our staff are free to participate in multiple public uh, and professional voluntary organizations. So there's freedom of, of association. There is also a straightforward transfer, especially in your first year between our different programs. I mentioned that the, the main program, the two main uh, streams and the different specializations, you can get a straightforward transfer in your first year. Uh, this gives you time to settle in and get at the end of the day, pick a fit that's best for you. Our graduates are also equipped uh, to meet the challenges of professional geomatics practice in Africa and internationally. This is driven by our research led and teaching uh, based curriculum. The programs are also de design, designed to emphasize on you being a problem solver, on you being an ethical professional, on you communicating professionally and working well within a team to deliver on critical outcomes. I'd, I'd like to also say that the learning model that we adopt as, as geomatics is we, we try to mix uh, your, your, your theoretical experience or your theoretical content that you learn with hands on field practice with in practice training in industry with laboratory se sessions and in uh, helping you learn in small groups and in large groups. We offer good facilities, competitive facilities and our programs span over four, four years with uh, an emphasis on also practical training in industry. As a student, you also want to know what will the experience of a student be in, in geomatics? Here we see several pictures with students interacting with modern equipment, total station, GNSS uh, sets. We also have data that is drawn from Earth observation methods. And we also see at the top right hand corner, students on a practicum or survey camp, they're out on a tree and they're having fun and they're collecting data. Uh, we also see another picture set of pictures that speaks to students learning through hands on practical work. Students are in interacting with different equipment. We see lecturers in the pictures. We see a mix of lecturers and students and we see them all having fun and collecting data. They're on campus in some pictures. They're off campus in some pictures. They are on top of buildings in certain pictures just to show you what happens is all around. We also take a mix. You will also learn and we take a mixed approach to data collection. We, we take data collection to be ground based, aerial based and space based. So you will get to interact with those different technologies and learn about them. You see a drone there. We also see aerial laser scanner data being collected, though you may not necessarily collect the data in the format shown in the picture, but you will definitely interact with the data and use drones to collect the data. There's a G GNSS constellation at the bottom. There's a satellite a platform being shown. So just to speak to the approach that we believe in a mixed approach to data collection. It's important to also show that although the picture is you will collect a lot of data outside and using uh, uh, satellite and space based platforms as well, you also will have to process and manage that data in the lab. You may be asking why we emphasize our maths and physics aspect. It's because when you're in the lab, you're going to use some of these criteria as well, some of these uh, uh, components to build up on your data processing. So this slide is just to show you how we bring together multiple uh, knowledge areas into producing a professional who will deliver in this uh, area of spatial data collection, management, modeling, analysis, and speaking to the five M's and the A. And uh, you probably will think, will there be cool things to do in this program? Certainly there are cool things to do. You will use a lot of cool tools to generate epic and exciting project uh, products. And that's really, that's really a thing to look forward to. There's also time for adventure. We see different uh, pictures here of hydrographic uh, surveying data being collected. There they are courses that speak to this component, so you'll be able to do some some sometimes if you choose do a bit of, of field work collection at sea or close to rivers and lakes so there's adventure in in the program as well uh your interest maybe it, it, does our curriculum res, re, respond to changes that are there in society a lot is changing rapidly definitely our students apply data science principles to model to monitor and to analyze spatially built pro problems. And we see that in the pictorial representation where there's total station, there's image footage, and you can be able to use that and apply data science principles to, to model and manipulate spatial data. And you will generate colorful content. Look at the beauty of all these different maps from different parts of the world. So our students manage and they also analyze spatial data to produce beautiful content in different colors and different themes that speaks to policy and decision makers. 
then you get to have a greater, all these things will allow you to have a greater contribution to your community and to the global discourse. So our students use all the knowledge they acquire, not only to collect the data, but to contribute to solving real life contemporary problems that speak to their communities and that speak to the world. And then you'll probably ask yourself, wow, sounds all exciting, but what can I really do with a geomatics degree? The main, um, can I say the main, uh, one of the main things you can do is you'll definitely re register, as I've said, as a professional. You'll be, uh, you'll be capacitated to register as a professional in different categories under the South African Geomatics Council, and sometimes some students re um, register abroad as well. So, in, in, uh, but the, also the generic areas that you could also look into working in, that spatial da data science, some are interested in drone mapping, you can work in construction. I'll pick some of them, but some are just listed. Maybe some want to get into environmental resource management. You can work in that. Some work in navigation services. These have been picked not off, off, off the head, but from some of the graduate areas that we've, we've, we've done research on and seen where our graduates are based. Other potential job opportunity and application areas of uh, cadastral surveying or property surveying, dealing with property boundaries that's around land and buildings and trying to secure tenure for, for people in different uh, types of tenure areas where tenure has to do with ownership of land and property. You can also work in topographic mapping if you like drawing or drafting. Topographic mapping is a pot potential application area or exit point as well. You can work in engineering and construction surveying where usually you're doing setting out or you're doing uh, monitoring of building projects progress and we see images of these are actually students. We have not taken workplace ones, but we want to show you that we actually deliver on our promise. So these are students who are actually doing practicals on engineering and construction surveying using different equipment. Uh, you can also work in a precise deformation surveying, mo modeling, monitoring and analysis. This is about, you know, when a building, for example, you see a uh, part of the UCT campus, just to, to monitor is to make sure that there's stability in the building. There's no movement over time, over the years. The same thing with roads and different uh, components. So monitoring is monitoring for movement, for changes, for maybe post damage analysis and things like that. So you can also work in spaces where you, you contribute to this great thing that uh, is around the built environment. Also, perhaps you have heard of plate te tectonics and how the planet, the, sorry, the different continents could be moving away or towards each other. There's a component which we call is under geodesy where we look at these different elements. We try to explain why they're happening. We make measurements about why they're happening and you can contribute to that greater discourse. Determination of the shape and the figure and size of the Earth. This again is under the geodetic umbrella, which is a section under our curriculum or component that you can choose to major in that has to do with actually finding the real shape of the Earth. A lot of us believe the shape of the Earth is actually a, a, a perfect sphere. In geodesy, you learn that it is not a sphere, but it takes the shape, different shapes, depending on different measurements about gravity and different things that are physics based. And you learn about the actual shape of the Earth and how to use that to, to model control within your, your country or the space where you're working. There's also the, this is under geodesy as well, the establishment of nat national and global geodetic control networks, very important for, for measurement for all the work that we do, which is centered around finding control, or actually coordinating specific positions on the earth. And the, you will learn about this all in the geodetic courses. Earth observation in general, this is uh, mixed. It can have a uh, ground based method. It can have space based methods. We use all these uh, broad earth observation uh, approaches to collect our data. So you will interact with that as well. You'll also be able to model, monitor and analyze data. You remember the M so you can model land cover or changes over time in different spaces. You model floods, landslides, surface ground pollution, forest fires, crime scenes, deforestation, and you can also model military data by bringing together different data sets and extracting what is important to you about that data set using different manipulation techniques that are specially oriented to solve those contemporary problems that speak to your community and the world we live in. Some can choose to work in precision engineering that is founded as or the base map or on a map. The map is the basis for precision engineering and positioning. So you can also have contributions in precision agriculture. 
There's also opportunities to work in oil and mineral, mineral exploration. This is in geology, so you can contribute to that and trying to, to cite out potential sources of oil and mineral uh, sites or exploration of that uh, mineral prior to the mining. You can also work in navigation. That's interesting. A lot of you have um, perhaps used your Google Earth just to navigate or your TomTom -tom device or your navigator to try and find where to go. There's a great contribution of uh, geomatics professionals in the base map that is the, the, the platform in which uh, the navigation occurs and you can choose to work in that area as well. Security and surveillance uh, is also another area where you can, uh, this picture just shows an image based from a satellite image at being used for security and surveillance. This is broader than this. It can also involve maps. It can involve navigation, but just to show that there are opportunities in security and surveillance. This shows you that there's a broad a number of areas or broad number of exit points that a geomatics graduate can explore. The program is exciting. We build it to be student centered and we, we ensure that we facilitate an optimum and exciting learning environment. You may be then asking, what can I do if I want to keep up to date with your programs and with the department? I'd encourage you to like our Facebook, our Instagram and our Twitter handles so that you keep, keep on getting constant updates about what we're doing and how you can get involved, even uh, if you're not really in the department, but just to get to know and get to get information about what we're doing and what's going on at UCT Geomatics. And if you want uh, any further information apart from the question and answer sec section, you certainly can send an email to our program convener, Professor Patroba Odera at patroba.odera.uct.arc.za. That brings me to the end of my presentation and thank you for listening. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Mo Blessings. That was a wonderful presentation and welcome everyone to the Division of Geomatics. We are waiting for your questions and I can see uh, some of them here. Uh, one is asking, is there a high demand for I mean, high job demand for geomatics. Yes, we did some survey around uh, two years ago, actually last year also, and we have feedback that about 86% of our graduates get employed in the first year of graduation. And that is wonderful. Actually, one of, one of the highest. The other question there is that, uh, what are the pros and cons of a career in geomatics. I'm not aware of cons. I'm only aware of pros. Actually, geomatics is a wonderful profession and as more, blessing, as more blessings has already given us the presentation, you can see that you have got diverse areas for job and you can work in very many places, not only confined to South Africa, but uh, globally, you can always find something to do because we deal with positioning and everything is about positioning. People want to know where something is happening and that is what we train you to do or we will train you to do. So what is the difference between surveying and geoinformatics? More blessings, would you like to respond to that? Okay, the difference between surveying and geoinformatics is that surveying is what you traditionally um, uh, use to, to collect. It's more, surveying is more focused on the collection of spatial data about the, the location of things, the management of that data. You're collecting data about what is where, about positions. It could be in cadastral, which is property. It could also be in engineering, which is a different area within the built environment. But geoinformatics focuses now on taking that data and turning it information into information. That means manipulating that data. Um, and turning it in, into information. But you will see when we say geomatics, geomatics is, we've, to, we've, we, we've specialized in both. Geomatics takes the geoinformation aspect. It also takes the surveying or data collection aspect, and we deliver on both those. So we are a combination of the one that focuses mainly on the collection of data and the one that manipulates the data and turns it into information that can be used and students get experience and exposure in both. The choice where they specialize remains with them, but we equip them with both of those skills. I hope that helps. Thanks so much. There's another question about uh, salaries uh, for geomatics jobs. Probably we are uh, we get similar salaries with the engineering uh, colleagues, but I do not know exactly the uh, uh, 
of the the differences because it depends on where where you are uh, employed. But I think geomatics is one of the scarce skills in the country, and so we are highly remunerated. And so you can be sure that you will be paid uh, highly if you take geomatics profession. The next question is how easy is it to find a job in geomatics, and what are the salaries like? I think those are uh, overlapping questions. We have already responded to that, uh, that about 80, 86 to about 90% of our graduates do get jobs before the end of their first year of graduation. And I think this is uh, one of the highest in the country. Uh, another one is their high, jo high job demand. Uh, once you complete this degree, I've already uh, responded to that. What is the salary? Same question, I've responded to that. And yeah, and the following questions are also similar, asking about the difference between geomatics and, and surveying that more blessings has already alluded to. At this juncture, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to invite one of our uh, senior students to uh, give his experiences of geomatics at UCT. Hayden, please, welcome. Thank you, Dr. Adera, and hello to everyone. My name is Hayden Hackney, and I'm a final year student in geomatics in the surveying stream at the University of Cape Town. What inspired me to study geomatics was my passion for mathematics and geography, and my love for working outdoors and in the community. I saw that studying geomatics at UCT would allow me to do this and allow me to become a change maker in my community and in my country. Over my years at UCT, I've really enjoyed them. The first two years of the degree saw me cement my understanding in maths as well as physics and something new to me, which is computer science. As the years went on and I progressed through the degree, I realized how much this degree has exposed me to different skills and professions. From land surveying to GIS, to remote sensing and photogrammetry, and something new to me, which is town planning, which I'd like to explore more. In addition, I've been exposed to courses in property and land and cadastral survey law, and I must say, I really enjoyed them and found them very interesting. Overall, I'm enjoying my time at UCT and more specifically my involvement in the geomatics degree. I certainly have built a firm foundation with my lecturers and fellow students and look forward to what the future holds. Thank you. Thank you so much, Hayden. That was a, a wonderful uh, collection of what geomatics is and indeed your experiences at UCT. Thank you. I would like Thank you. to continue with the questions. And uh, there's another question that is asking, can geomatics be used for land surveying in space, in somewhere like Mars? Yes, we do positioning everywhere whether it is under the earth that is uh, at the core uh, or the mantle or on the earth surface, in the sea, in the space, Mars, wherever it is, we can always uh, do some positioning and we use uh, space uh, techniques to do some space probing uh, kind of uh, work. And those are projections of what you can do in the future. So. I can always uh, advise students to apply for an uh, internship at NASA, and it is possible to get because they basically do positioning. And the next question is, how is geomatics able to respond to the disruptive trends like uh, for IR? Yes, we are there. Actually, the important component of for IR is positioning. So you want to do uh, positioning in automated man so that you can get information about position in real time and that is what we will be training you to do thank you so much for those questions we will continue to wait for uh, more questions uh, probably uh, mary would you like to talk about uh, the admission applications Yes, we have one minute to go, so it will be brief and quick, but the application, the applications are open. You apply online.uct.ac.za. We look at your grade 11 results. The grade 11 results are, are purely to give you a conditional offer. If you don't meet the requirements in your grade 11 results, we will wait for your June and for your September 
and then your final offer will come with the with the your, your final results in January. Um, the closing date for applications is the end of July, the 31st of July. For the Faculty of Engineering, the built environment, you do not need to do the NBTs, but please note if you're applying to another faculty as well, you will need to do the NBTs. I see we are at 12.30. You are welcome to email me if you have questions on admissions to mary.hilton at uct.ac.za. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you so much, Mary. That was a very uh, important information. We still have extended time of another four minutes and we will be able to answer more questions from participants if there are. Just checking around and I'm not seeing more questions. I think it seems Petra, we are. Petra, there yes. was a question asking what is the difference between surveying and geoinformatics? Yes, I remember more blessings answered that question, but maybe yes. if the questioner was not there at that time, more blessings, would you like to repeat the answer, please? OK, thank you, Petrova. Just to quickly go through the answer. The answer is that surveying focuses on the collection of spatial data using different equipment, different technologies, but it focuses on the collection of spatial data to locate a particular position. Then geoinformatics focuses on taking that data, manipulating and converting it into information. But the term that we use for our programs is geomatics, which is a combination of surveying with geoinformatics for spatial data uses. So at UCT, we offer you a program that hinges on the strengths of both the data collection from the surveying and related uh, uh, Earth observation techniques, as well as the manipulation of that data, converting it into information that can answer problems or contemporary problems in your world and in, in, in your country or in the space where you're working in. So the difference is one is about positioning mainly, the other one is about turning information, uh, data into information, but geomatics offers both surveying and, geoma and geoinformatics equals geomatics. Thank you so much. I think that question is, uh, is well answered. And we are just about to come to the end of our presentation today. I would like to thank everyone for participating in this program. We are looking forward to welcoming you at UCT and specifically to Geomatics. We would love to train you and learn together with you as we move into the future. Please contact me at patroba.odera at UCT. Uh, .ac.za and I will be able to respond to your concerns and your questions. You can just log on, you can just check our website in case you want to get more details about geomagics. Thank you so much and I wish you all the best as you continue to search for your future career. My advice for you is to choose geomagics. Thank you. <laughs>